Okay, we just looked at the derivative of the sum of two functions, and we saw that because a limit distributes across addition, the derivative distributes across addition too. A very similar reasoning can lead us to the conclusion for the derivative of a constant times a function. So here's our example. I'll just show you the rule here. It's very simple and intuitive. If f of x is equal to 4x squared, think of this as the constant 4 multiplied by the function x squared. That's what we mean by the constant times a function. Some number times our function. Well, here's how we do it. The derivative with respect to x of 4 times x squared is simply 4 times the derivative with respect to x of x squared. So a constant multiplier, in other words, can be brought out front. And then we can just take the derivative of the function that's left. And so this is going to be 4 times the derivative of x squared. And the derivative of x squared is simply 2x. So we end up with 8x as our answer. And it's that easy. And so if you're differentiating a function like this, you typically look at the exponent here, bring it out front as a constant multiplier, and it gets multiplied by this other number, whatever coefficient might happen to be out front. And so the, the, the 2 times the 4 there gives us the 8. And then, of course, the exponent is reduced by 1. So we have 8x to the 1 in this case. So just another quick example. If f of x was uh, 3x to the 7th, then f prime of x would be what? Well, this would simply be 3 times the derivative of x to the 7th, which would be 7x to the 6th. And usually you can do this step in your head and just go straight to 21x to the 6th in this particular case. And then most textbooks summarize these basic properties, the derivative of a sum. So I'll just summarize them here. The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So the derivative of f plus g, where f and g are both functions of x, is just f prime plus g prime. And the derivative of a constant times a function, the derivative of some constant times f is just going to be that constant times the derivative of f. And then the derivative of a constant, if k is a constant, the derivative is simply 0. Now together, those properties can allow us to very quickly and easily differentiate any linear combination of power functions. And that means any polynomial, because that's what a polynomial is. You have some power function, maybe it's a, a cubic 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. Each of those things is either a power function or a constant times a power function. And they're all added together, so we have a sum. And there's typically a constant in there as well. So we can quickly differentiate any polynomial. And here's an example. This is a fourth degree polynomial. f of x is 3x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 7x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I can just immediately tell you the derivative. This 3 times the derivative of x to the fourth is going to be 12x cubed. And then I have 15x squared plus 14x plus 3, and the derivative of the constant 2 there at the end is 0. So I have immediately found the derivative. I know that this function for any given x has a value that is the slope of this function at that point x. And that's amazing to be able to differentiate this entire function that fast. And I don't have to go through the whole deal of the limit as delta x approaches 0, that would be a lot of work for this function. I don't have to do that. I can just differentiate each term using the power rule and the concept of a constant times the derivative of a function and go straight to my answer. And it's very fast and very accurate. Let me show you one other example that's important here. If I have f of x is equal to 2x to the 1 -fifth. This is not a polynomial. This does not qualify as a polynomial because I have a non-integer exponent. You, you can only have, actually, not integers, but whole numbers. You can only have, for your exponents, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, for it to be a polynomial. But the power rule still works, even if we have fractional exponents right here. 
So to, so to find the derivative of this, f prime of x is going to be 2 times the derivative of x to the 1 fifth. And that's going to be 1 fifth. This power just comes out front as a constant multiplier. And then I have x to the power of this original exponent minus 1. And so 1 fifth minus 1 is negative 4 fifths. So my answer would be 2 fifths x to the power of negative 4 fifths. So it's important to note that the power rule works even if we have fractional exponents. Okay, and now we'll wrap up this section with a couple of more examples that go into a little more detail on derivatives. So here's our next example. f of x is 4x cubed. So this is some function, it's a cubic function, and we're told to find the slope at x equals 2.5. Now if you want to get a mental picture, which I think is always helpful, a 4x cubed function is going to look something like this. And so at some x value, 2.5, this is going to have a certain steepness, and that's what we're trying to find, the slope at x equals 2.5. And here's how we do it. We're given the original function, and that's it right there. So let's find the derivative function, f prime of x. And we can do that using the power rule. That's going to be 4 times the derivative of x cubed, which would be 4 times 3x squared. And I do that in my head. I do the 4 times the 3, get a 12, and I have my x squared, so it's 12x squared. So this is the derived function, or what we commonly refer to as the derivative. If we want to find the slope at 2.5, then we need f primed of 2.5. In other words, this function with the 2.5 plugged in for the x. So this is going to simply be 12 times 2.5 squared. And you work that out and it comes out to 75. So when x is equal to 2.5, my original function is really steep. It has a slope of 75 at that point. And one more example here. f of x is 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 4x plus 2. And we're told to find at what x values does the slope of f equal 2. Well, we'll start by finding the derivative, f primed of x. And that's quick and easy. This will be 9x squared minus 8x minus 4. The derivative of the constant here is 0. So we need to know the slope at what x values the slope is 2. Well the derivative function tells us the slope of the original function. So this thing right here, this must be 2. So to do this we set that equal to 2. We say 9x squared minus 8x minus 4 equals 2. And we solve for x. And we can solve this for x because this is a quadratic and we can always solve a quadratic. I'm going to move my 2 over here, or just subtract 2 from both sides. And you get 9x squared minus 8x minus 6 is equal to 0. And so I'm, I'm immediately going to go to the quadratic formula. I'm not going to try to factor this with this 9 out front. I don't think that would be easy to factor at all. So I'm just going to say a is equal to 9 b is equal to negative 8 and c is equal to negative 6 and pop this in the quadratic formula. x is going to be negative b which is a positive 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 64 minus 4 times a times c and all of that over 2a which is 18 and that works out to 8 plus or minus the square root of 280 all of this stuff under the radical here works out to 280 and that's over 18. And so you do 8 plus the square root of 280 over 18 and that gives you about approximately 1.374 and you do 8 minus the square root of 280 over 18 and you get negative point 485 approximately. And you could leave your answers in simplified radical form also. I've just converted them to decimals and rounded to, to three decimal places. But these are the x values at which the slope of the original function is 2.